So what I've got here now, I've got uh, another blank. This is just scrap that I have uh, from my work at the bowling center. It was an old worn out shaft that was no good for the machines anymore. Uh, I made the first part out of a, another section of this and this is what was parted off. Uh, so this has a keyway in the top, but I'm not going to use this end of it for the part itself. Uh, the, uh, the cap is only going to be used the last inch of this. Uh, so what I'm doing here, I've got it in this way, I'm going to turn this down to the 20 millimeters uh, so I can run this in my ER32 call it holder. Uh, so I'm just going to turn a short section like that, like what was on this part. Uh, and that will allow me to, get to mount it in my other holder and uh, start the actual work on the cap itself. off and setting uh, zero for the depth just as a reference for depth of cut. I'll later take a measurement and enter in the actual size of the work. before doing the actual cuts to shape.
I'm going to slow down and uh, get a smooth pass so I can get a good measurement. So it looks like it's pretty much right on 1.1, 1 .1. so I'm going to enter that in. Okay, so I still have a good bit to go, so I'm going to go back to the force cut. We're at 27.9 change uh, millimeter. We're going to get down to 20. So you might have noted the change in measurements in my two statements here. Uh, I skipped over a good bit of uh, cutting uh, just to try and shorten the video a little bit. Chips that would normally be hitting me too, I'm noticing. 
This is the first time I've used this since I made it. because I'm almost there. Or feed rate, I should say. Pretty close. Uh, 0 0.03 millimeter off. So I've just made the direct the correction and we should be right on it now. I probably could use a higher speed for the finish pass on this, but it's looking really good, so I'm gonna leave it right where it is. on the RPM. Okay, this should be our last pass. just as I was feeding in that it ticked over the last 0 .01 but that's right on the threshold of its uh, reading capability so I'm not worried about it and for what this is it's not that critical anyway so I'm just feeding it into a collet. The other side is where it gets more important but 0 .01 millimeter not, not inches it's uh, that's pretty fine. We'll see how accurate it really is. Looks like it's pretty much what it what it said. Uh, 19.99. That's well within what I need. Okay, so I'm gonna disassemble this. I'm gonna take my chuck off. I'm gonna put my pallet adapter back in, remount, and then I'll come back. Okay, I'm gonna face off the front here and I'm just going to do this dry for the facing and then I'll put the water on when I start cutting back. facing cut. I'm starting out about 1400 RPM here and then I bring the speed up to about 16 as I get closer to the center as the periphery gets smaller. This helps maintain a more consistent uh, velocity in the steel itself. Okay, so now I'm going to clean off the surface for the length of the part itself. Uh, and then I'll start cutting in the step that will go inside the arbor. Uh, apparently that shaft was beat up more than I realized. <sighs> I still got to pull more off of that. Well, I was a little concerned. 
concerned because the shaft's pretty beat up. Uh, it, this had a lot of chafing on it when it was in the original machine, so one side splattered a little bit. Uh, I didn't realize quite how bad it is. Uh, and I was concerned after my last couple passes here that I wasn't going to be able to get all the, uh, the chafe marks and pitting and all that out and still have enough uh, metal left to make the part that I wanted. But it looks like I'm going to have just enough. Uh, behind here it gets worse and I wouldn't be able to do it there, but I only have to go back 25.4 uh, millimeters, a one inch back from my facing here and the line where it starts to degrade is right at that point so I'm just going to make it on this. So now I'm cutting a smaller step that fits inside the bore of the arbor and keeps everything centered. got a little more to go than I thought. I'll probably do one more check right as I get up to the end of this. Okay, so I'm right at 26 right now, which is what the DRO has been reading. Uh, so I just got another six to go and I'll be right on it. I will say, whatever uh, type of steel this is, uh, I'm getting a real good finish on this. It's really smooth. Uh, I mean, I'm using a fine cut to begin with, but it's like... I don't have to do any finish work on this after. It doesn't even need emery or anything. In retrospect of filming this video, I believe this was probably a true 4140 shaft steel, which would explain why I had difficulties using high speed steel tools, whereas the carbide tools cut really well in it. Should be on it. Mic it and then do an actual fit because 
might have to might have to trim it down just a little to get it to fit a little fit smoothly. Yeah, that is dead on. Now, it goes on, but it's tight. It's an interference fit. So. Probably if I take off, uh, I don't know, probably 0 0.05 millimeter. I think we probably put it in about where I want. And I think I'm going to do this dry because usually the thing cuts like that. Uh, I find the water tends to make them a little skippy. Uh, I guess it hydroplanes, I'm not sure. Uh, but on, on real thin cuts, I don't have good luck with the, with the coolant. So I'm going to do this as a dry cut. Where this is the final finished cut to measurement, I'm taking my time to dial this in to make sure it's absolutely accurate and where I want it. just the way I want it. Can't feel any play, but it slides on nice. And we'll see how the, uh, the adapter slides over there. Could be a shade tighter, but it's with it. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Because this whole thing is only uh, three quarters of an inch long. It's probably only about five thou at worst. Right out at the end. Point zero eight uh, millimeter, not thou. So actually, not not as bad as I thought. Okay, so next I need to drill a hole in the end. Uh, for the bolt to pass through, uh, we'll go. We can go up into the stud here. That'll get cut off. In fact, that will make parting a little easier. Uh, and once we do that, we're gonna flip this around, and I'll probably have to go. I'll probably go to the three jaw at that point. Uh, yeah, three jaw would be enough because it's just 
at the other end of this I'm going to drill a slightly wider hole and uh, bore to bring it out to the diameter of uh, the Allen screw here. Uh, then we're ready to part it off and it's, and it's all done. Uh, I will quickly, before I do that, I'm just going to chamfer this edge here. Now I'm drilling the pilot hole before drilling through. I think I might have a little swarf up in here. Don't want to take a chance on it throwing the, uh, the bit out of center. The drill bit is cobalt and it's cutting good, but starting out I get resonance, so I put my finger on the side of the bit to dampen it and get a good start so it doesn't wander further down the hole.
should be good pretty close to where I need to be. Just want to go a little extra for the uh, the point of the drill. Okay, so that should give me plenty there. So I want to give a quick shout out to Joe Pazinski. Uh, I watch a lot of his videos. Uh, excellent teacher. Uh, I'm really just amateur. Just want to show a few things to some people, some innovations that I have on the machines themselves, uh, and just some fun stuff. Uh, but if you really want to learn this trade, uh, I highly recommend watching Joe Pazinski's uh, videos. Uh, he has a lot of them. Uh, he is clearly a true master of the art. Uh, and I, the reason I'm mentioning him now, uh, you might have noted I was moving the tailstock back and forth while I was drilling. Uh, and this is actually a technique that uh, Joe Pazinski just did a video on. Uh, so basically I learned it from him. Uh, and I just started doing this a couple days ago and I have to say I really like it. It's a real time saver. Uh, the basic premise of it is that you don't have to crank the tailstock all the way back every time when you clear your tri chips in the drill. Uh, you just turn it back about a half turn and then you pull the tailstock out, uh, clear it, and then put it back in and turn it back to where you were and start drilling again. Uh, and uh, you use the lock, you uh, release and, and tighten the lock each time you do that. Uh, I'm not the greatest at explaining it. The best thing, just go over to his page and look it up and watch the video, along with many others that he has. So, obviously, I'm parting off here. Uh, this is a high-speed uh, tool steel that I'm using for my parting tool. However, I did take the time to harden this before I started cutting. Uh, I'm also cutting dry, and I was a little surprised by this. Uh, it worked a lot better cutting dry with the high-speed tool steel as opposed to wet. As soon as I put the coolant on it, it did not want to cut for anything. But it did work okay here dry. And at the end, I'll show there was considerable wear on this, despite the hardening. So on the side view, the notch at the top is intentional as a, it's meant to be a chip breaker. But as I show the top here, it, you can see that the profile has rounded. Here I'm just facing off the rough finish from Carter.
So this is the tool that I made last night, uh, the micro boring bar. Uh, we'll see how this does. It's just a quick job trying to see if I can get it to work. Uh, it's just made out of an old bolt. Uh, that was a high grade bolt. I believe it was a head bolt or something. So it should be pretty hard. Uh, we'll see how it cuts. Uh, not sure yet. I did not have a small enough boring bar on hand and I really needed the square profile at the bottom of the bore. Okay, so it definitely seems to be cutting. It likes it dry. It did not like putting uh, the uh, coolant with the lubrication in there. Uh, so I'm going to keep going with this while I get it to size. Hopefully it holds up and doesn't burn out. Uh, but right now I'd say it's, it's doing what I expect it to and should get the job done. I'm just going to take little cuts at a time because I don't want to overwork this. Because it's probably not a lot harder than what I'm trying to cut. get a quick measurement so I know what I'm going to be turning out to here. Uh, it actually seems to be cutting pretty good, better than I, I was thinking at first, so I may go a little more aggressive with it. Well, I'm almost at my mark, and I do feel a little degradation in the tool, but I think it's going to hold up. So far, it's doing reasonably well, uh, and I've only got a few thou left to go here. Go a little further. It's close.
just what I want. It sits nice and flush in there once we turn it. So I think we're ready to pull this. I did get a little bit of mooring on here, but it's not bad from uh, when I did the uh, the cut off on it. Uh, it jammed a couple of times where it, it stopped and the chuck spun on it. But I did have aluminum wrapped on it to protect it in case that happened, and also to keep the jaws from digging in even if, when it's stationary in there. Uh, so I don't think it's going to take much more and just maybe a little brush up, uh, probably stick it in there and just hit it with a file or even a little sandpaper. I think sandpaper will probably take care of it. Let's see if it still fits. Yeah, it still fits good, so really not even an issue. So let's try it with the nut and get to see how this goes in. So that'll thread in there and I think the uh, the boring bar pushed a little ridge down there. I got to clean up. I think that's why that's hanging there, just catching the threads. I can see it. So I'll probably just clean that up in there. I can probably just hit that with file, round file, real quick, just to knock that edge off. There we go. Okay, so we got a blade. Now let's see, is that the right direction? No, we want it the other way. Like that. Right there. That just slides in. And that so that keys it so it can't wiggle around. And we just tighten it down with the Allen ball. I believe that's the same as this. So that's our arbor, and that'll fit in the ER32 collet. Let me see if I can show that in just a few. Okay, so it's uh, the piece is all finished now, uh, and I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. Looks like it's going to work really well. Uh, I did take a minute to uh, just chamfer the edges on this just a tiny bit I don't want to take too much because I need that uh, edge here to seat the blade uh, but just enough to so you don't get cut on it and uh, I also took a little scotch bright and just kind of polished it up a little bit both the parts here okay so we got our ER32 collet snaps in the closing collet just goes in just enough to hold it in place and just slide that up in. We'll tighten up the collet. I'm going to leave that up there just a second. Okay, and our blade goes on. You've got to pay attention to the direction, just like on a regular saw. And our bolt goes in, our Allen bolt. And that just keys up the inside of it. Now the saws do have a keyway on there. I may at some point consider milling one, but I don't think it's really necessary for the small ones like this. Uh, if anything, I think it's a beneficial to have it able to spin if you really jam something on there, which you, you know obviously you don't want to do that. 
but it's kind of like a safety measure to, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I don't see that I'd be pushing it that hard I'm on a small one. Maybe if you're going up to like half an inch, then, then it could become necessary, but... Okay, so that should be plenty right there. Yeah. Spin it up. Now we're going to let you look right down the edge to see how straight this came out. That's turning right now. Okay, so that concludes this project, and I uh, hope you enjoyed. And uh, maybe this gives you some ideas if you want to make your own. Uh, one of the reasons I did this, well, for one, for learning, and uh, also, two, I wanted a lot of clearance down here so I didn't have a lot of stick out with the way that it was assembled that was part of the design of this uh, but mo mostly just so I could have the experience of learning from this and uh, help me out on future projects if you've made it this far I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and found it entertaining or educational if so, please consider hitting like or subscribe. It does help give me incentive to continue producing more. Thank you.